In Christian Basics Lesson 20, The Confessing Church. Now, in, in this way, we're, we're, we covered the Ten Commandments. We talked about how there's six main parts that we want to talk about. Ten Commandments, the Creed, Lord's Prayer, then Baptism, Repentance, uh, and the Lord's Supper. These first two really are the theological, the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer as well. But especially now that we get into the second part, that's the Creed, we're going to talk about um, theology proper. We're going to spend a lot of time on uh, fleshing out the Creed. Now, why the Creed? There's no, you can't go into your Bible and find it, it somewhere the, the Apostles' Creed. It's not there. It's a um, it's a confessional document. It was written by the church. We don't even know when the Apostles' Creed was written. The Nicene Creed was written in in um, in 325, expanded in 381. Uh, the uh, the Athanasian Creed was written in the next century as well. So we have these three creeds. Those are the three ecumenical creeds, by the way, that were accepted by all the Christians who were around at the time. But but why are we using the creed in, instead of the Bible? I suppose in some ways um, we, we don't have to. You could use a, a book of the Bible or use particular verses or put verses together like this. But that's, in a way, what the creed is. It takes the, the major works and acts of God and it puts them all together, especially against the people who were fighting against it at the time. So we're going to use the Apostles' Creed, which is the simplest creed. Sometimes it's called the, the Baptismal Creed, to look at God, the Father, and His work of creation, the Son and His work of redemption, and the Holy Spirit and His work of, of sanctification. And that'll be this, the outline. But what do we say to those people who, who say, well, why do you have creeds anyways? I thought you taught that the Bible alone is your only source and for rule and norm. Well, first of all, if if any part of the creed was contradicted by the Bible or not clearly taught in the Bible, we should throw it out. But second of all, the Lord's Church is always confessing the truths of the Scripture against error. So the church is a confessing church. Jesus says, this is Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse 32. Whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So Jesus puts his church in the world to confess, to confess his name, to confess his truth, to argue against the errors uh, that come around and to say those things that are true. If we didn't confess Jesus, if we didn't, if we didn't confess the truths of the scripture, then we wouldn't be the Lord's church. We wouldn't we wouldn't be doing everything that the Lord has set us in this world to do. So when we make a confession, a creed or a, a creedal statement or something like this, we're doing what the church does. We're saying this is what's true and we accept it and this is what's false, we reject it. Now, to the Apostles' Creed, so we have the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed. Um, those, all the text of that is in the notes. And if you're looking for the notes, that's wolfmuller.co slash basics. You'll find all these videos cataloged as well as a, as a long handout. It's getting longer as we add these things on. But in there, you'll find the text of the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed. You'll notice that they get longer and longer. So the Apostles' Creed is pretty short. The Nicene Creed was written in Nicaea. Uh, in 325, the third article was expanded in Constantinople in 381, and then the Filioque, which is the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, was added a couple of centuries later. And so that the whole Nicene Creed is officially called the Niceo-Constantinopolitan Creed with Filioque. That's just kind of too long to talk about. And the Athanasian Creed is even longer. It is a long section about the mystery of the Holy Trinity. It's really quite beautiful and tells us how to rightly confess the Trinity and also on the Incarnation. And so those, those three creeds are there. We're going to use the Apostles' Creed as the shortest and kind of most basic outline for this teaching Christian basics. And, and the Apostles' Creed we want to recognize comes to us in three articles. Uh, I think the medieval um, division of the Creed was in 12 articles. In fact, there was a tradition that, that it was written because the apostles came together just before they scattered and went all over the world. And they said, okay, we want to make sure we're teaching the same thing. So let's let each one of us pick something that we want to make sure that's taught. And so all the 12 apostles put something in there and the result was a creed that's probably a story and how we got there. It's, it's a better probably to divide it up into three. And so we have the first article, 
which is, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. That has to do with the Father and creation. Then the second article, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. So that has to do with Jesus, his, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and the redemption that he won for us in his life and death. And then the third article, uh, and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. So that has to do with the Holy Spirit and his work to make us holy as well. And we'll take each of these articles in turn and unfold them and, uh, and dig them out. But we want to see the Trinitarian structure and what the three articles are about. Now, just to kind of get it in our heads, we play a game with the kids. What article is it? And I'll name something and they got to say what article it is. So donuts, first article. Birth of Jesus, second article. The Bible, third article. Rain, first article. The whole uh, baptism, third article. The resurrection of Jesus, second article. So that we can look around us and everything that we have, all these various different gifts in life, come to us as first, second, and third article gifts that God gives himself to us with all of creation and all of these other gifts as well. So there's an introduction into the creedal aspect and the second part of this uh, of this uh, 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 thing, lessons, teaching Christian, this class, something like that. We'll come back in lesson 21 and introduce the first great mystery of the Christian faith, the doctrine of the holy and blessed Trinity. Wow.